welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to upgrade the graphics card in my video editing PC. Specifically, I'm going to fit this Gigabyte GeForce GTX 650. However, the process I'll follow is the same for any graphics card update. Upgrading a graphics card is a six-stage process. Firstly, the hardest bit is to choose a new card based on your own trade-offs between performance, price and energy consumption. You then need to download the latest drivers for your new card before uninstalling your current graphics drivers. Fourthly comes hardware exchange, after which you need to install the drivers for your new card. And finally, it's always a good idea to do some performance tests to check that the upgrade was actually worth it. The card I've chosen for my upgrade is this Gigabyte GeForce GTX 650. This is the lowest spec card in Nvidia's top end range and is based on their latest Kepler technology. I'm doing this upgrade to improve video production in Lightwave, After Effects and Premiere Pro. Since version 5, Premiere Pro can access the CUDA core architecture in the latest Nvidia graphics cards to substantially improve performance. This Gigabyte GeForce GTX 650 has 384 CUDA cores and 2 GB of the latest GDDR5 graphics RAM. The card is small but reassuringly heavy with a large heatsink under its 4 inch fan and has two dual link DVI-D connectors, one HDMI connector and one VGA or D-Sub port. The GTX 650 fits into the PCI Express 2.0 or 3.0 slot found on most PC motherboards manufactured in the past four years or so and uses about 64 watts of power. This means that it must be fitted into a PC with at least a 400 watt power supply. The card costs around $140 in the US or £100 in the UK and would be a good choice for a low end gaming PC. As some of you know, I do my writing on this very low power Atom PC. However, when I produce videos, I use this far more powerful floor standing computer. The large case may be rather old and not very pretty, but it's good for cooling and continues to serve me well. It's also positioned under my desk so that I can remove the front and swing the side open for rapid upgrades. Indeed, I'm able to change the graphics card without disconnecting anything except the monitor and I don't have to move the PC. The machine is currently fitted with a 2.8 GHz Core 2 Quad processor, 8 GB of RAM, a number of SSDs and Western Digital Caviar Black hard drives, a 750 Watt Zalman power supply and a GeForce 9500 GT graphics card that I'm going to replace. But before I tackle hardware exchange, I first need to download the drivers for my new card and uninstall the old ones. While every new graphics card comes with a driver disk, it's always a good idea to download the very latest drivers and ideally before you remove your old card. So on the Nvidia website I've selected my new card and I'm saving the latest drivers to my PC C drive. Before fitting a new graphics card it's a very good idea to uninstall your current graphics drivers. To do this I'm booting my PC and pressing F8 for the advanced boot options and then selecting safe mode. In Windows 7 and beyond it's very important to uninstall your old graphics drivers in safe mode as if you don't your machine may become unbootable. Once safe mode has booted, to uninstall your old graphics drivers right click computer, go down to properties, select device manager, open up display adapters, right click your current driver and then select uninstall. After accepting the confirmation message you can then shut down your PC. The old graphics card can now be removed from your computer. To do this we need to remove the retaining screw and then to pull the card out whilst raising the plastic retaining clip on the PCI Express slot. With the old card removed we're then ready to install the new one. When fitting a higher performance card like the GTX 650, note that two case backing plates need to be removed to accommodate it. Once in place, the new card also needs securing, here with two screws as it covers two slots. Again, for a higher power card like the GTX 650, 
a 6-pin PCI power connector then needs inserting. Before booting up, you should also ensure that everything is safely in order and, of course, connect your monitor. With the new card installed, you can boot your PC as normal and don't have to enter safe mode. As expected, things will initially be running at a very basic resolution, but this can easily be fixed by opening up computer, navigating to where you saved your new graphics card drivers, and then double-clicking to install them. For many people, the Express option will be just fine. However, here I'm opting for a custom install and selecting just the top option of the graphics card driver only, which is all I need for running Lightwave, After Effects and Premiere Pro. If, however, you're installing a graphics card for playing games, the Express option may well be your best bet. Installation inevitably takes a little time, and once complete, you'll need to reboot. But when you do, your display resolution will return to normal and everything should work just fine. Finally, let's take a minute to view the results of our labours. For a start, we'll compare the Windows Experience Index, where the graphics and gaming graphics scores have increased from 4.4 and 6.3 to 7.4 and 7.4 respectively. The whole PC also looks a lot more balanced, with the constraint on performance being the 4-year-old motherboard with its relatively slow memory and disk interface. Moving on, let's look at some 3D passmark tests. Here, once again, a mark performance improvement can easily be noted, with the green bars representing the new card significantly outpacing the red bars for the older card that wasn't even capable of running some of the tests. We can see this even more clearly in some video comparisons. For example, here in the Passmark DirectX 9 Complex test, while at first glance things may not look that different, the frame rate is more than doubled. Moving to the DirectX 10 test, the performance difference between the old card and the new card is quite dramatic, with a far higher and totally usable frame rate being achieved, as you can clearly see. Finally, in the texture-intensive DirectX 11 test, the GTX 650 again stands head, shoulders and rather tall hat above its older competitor, and proves to be far better for rendering floating jellyfish in space. So there we have it. I successfully upgraded my graphics card and used it to edit this video. So that has to be it for this time, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.